This is QTV News. I am Mamadou Gajaga. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, more disturbing revelations at the TRRC. Meeting to discuss ways of consolidating the country's peace and security on the way. An innovative waste collection service in KMC announced in June has started operations. We are becoming ever more accustomed to hearings about land disputes. We hear about what the situation is in the Central River region. Each academic year brings a review of the previous year's performance and resources. This year, the Education Ministry set out various challenges including subjects and geographical areas where resources are to be deployed. For more on this and other stories, stay tuned. Welcome and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. Malik Jatta and Omar Jallo, former members of ex-President Jamis Hit Squad on Tuesday, admitted participating in several killings, including the killings of Haruna and Mercy Jame and the execution of 44 Ghanaian nationals in 2005. They made these confessions while testifying at the ongoing TRRC public hearings. QTV's Ansumana Esonyasi reports. Two members of ex-president James Dead Squad, also known as the Junglers, on Tuesday confessed to participating in several killings and tortures in Kanilai and at the NIA headquarters. Malik Jada and Omar Jalo give graphic details of how most of their victims were gruesomely executed and disposed of. Continuing his testimony from the previous day, Malik Jada admitted to participating in the killing of 44 foreign nationals in July 2005, the majority of whom were Ghanaians. He admitted his victims also included the former president's cousins, Haruna and Masi Jame. I saw Manjang coming with Masi. First, was pushing her. At a point, she, he just knocked the lady's legs down. And the woman, since from the vehicle, was praising God's name, saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin and was mentioning this continuous until the time she was just brought down on her attempt, in her attempt to get up from the ground Madame put the pistol on the head and give, him, give her a shot in the head Testifying further, the witness also confessed to participating in the execution of detainees arrested in the aftermath of the March 2006 foil coup Without any charge or prosecution he alleged they were ordered by ex-president Jame to summarily execute the alleged coupies. When you arrived at your destination in Kazamas? When he pulled, uh, pulled to a halt, I came from the car. It's like I did not know what was going on. As I come from the car, already he has already gone down and uh, went behind. So as I was approaching, going towards him behind, you know, his vehicle was the lead car. So I had to come backwards to know what's going on. In that movement, I saw him pushing somebody and said to me, aha, uh -huh, escort him. Then he pointed to a truck to the left. So the victim was to lead. I was behind him and he solo behind me. And he said, just continue moving, follow the truck. As the victim went to a point, it appears like it was the brink of a ditch. Automatically, he stopped. When he stopped, that was the time Solo put the touchlight from behind me and said, shoot, shoot. The witness also alleged that he fell out with members of the group after he repeatedly questioned his seniors as to why they were using them to carry out unlawful orders. He also told the commission that his former colleagues had on various occasions attempted to assassinate him. Next up was Omar E. Jalo, commonly known as Oya, the jungler. In his testimony, he also confessed to participating in the killing of foreign nationals in 2005, who he alleged were then dumped in an old deserted well. However, he alleged that Sanam Manjang and Malik Jata did most of the killing. Furthermore, the witness also gave graphic details of how they gruesomely executed the former president's cousin Haruna Jami. 
Sanamanjam came down, bring out a rope, give it, give it to us, me and Jen, that we should tie it at the neck of Aruna and fall him down. And we tied the rope at the neck. But at that time, I was not informed that this was the mission, that Aruna, we are getting Aruna killed. He didn't tell us. So we take the rope, we, we round it Aruna's neck. Jen, you, you thought that was for sport? No, I didn't. Talk. I thought that was the, maybe they were threatening him. So I, I took the one side of the rope. Jen took the one side of the rope. And how, how was the knot tied? Was it tied to strangle? The knot. The rope. The no, it, it was not. It was just a long rope like this, and we we rounded the neck. The other one cut the other half. The other one cut the other half. There was not some anything like not. And what happened next? And Sanamanya told us to to fall him down. We fall him down. He asked us to pull the rope. We pulled. Then he was just sitting on top of the car. He jumped from that that place and stamp at the neck of Aruna. The witness is expected to continue his testimony on Wednesday. However, he has also admitted to participating in the torture of detainees at the NIA headquarters. His torture victims included prominent Imams Baba Lee and Bakausu Fofana. And Sumana is a for QTV News. Senior officials of the government and development partners are meeting to discuss ways of consolidating the country's peace and security. The meeting is jointly organized by ECOWAS Secretariat and the Strategic Policy Delivery Department under the Office of the President. Aliusisa was there and this is his report. The four-day meeting on peace building, strategy policy, best practices and delivery seeks to, among other things, support the consolidation of peace, democracy and good governance in the Gambia. The forum, which brought together permanent secretaries, administrators and policy makers, is funded under the eu supported ECOWAS Peace, Security and Stability Mandate Program. At the end of the forum, participants are expected to come up with recommendations that will further strengthen peace and democracy that the government has embarked on, but also help cement the relationship between peace, development and security. Mohamed Jallo, permanent secretary at the Office of the President, said despite the gains in ushering a peaceful and democratic country, challenges still exist. There are still some challenges as far as maintaining the peace and security of this country is concerned. We know that there are some plus points. Because of the newfound democracy, land conflicts have resurfaced. We are not saying it's the cause of that, but because some of these actually existed in the early 70s and 80s, but now people feel that there is democracy, we can say anything, we can do anything. Some of those conflicts are resurfacing. Jalo is hopeful that the recommendations from the forum will help address the challenges the country is faced with, including caste system. Promoting peace and security within the sub-region is one of the key mandates of the sub-regional bloc ECOWAS. Vabage Flo is the ECOWAS permanent representative to the Gambia. It is a fact that we cannot only address conflicts once they are on the front pages of the newspapers. It is therefore the collective responsibility of all of us to ensure that structures are put in place, especially at the policy and decision-making levels, to ensure sustainable peace, stability, and development are achieved in the country. In your brown, representative of the European Union says the project seeks to support ECOWAS mandate in conflict prevention and resolution. We agree with ECOWAS aspirations to shift from a reactive to a preventative mode. The project supports the operationalization of the African Peace and Security Architecture, APSA, and is closely coordinated with the African Peace Facility funded APSA support program and the support of the African Training Centers in Peace and Security. With the emergence of security challenges, the outcomes of the meeting are expected to reflect in the decision by policymakers to ensure a peaceful and safe country. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. Land disputes are now a common burning problem in the Gambia. 
It should therefore come as no surprise to hear the Deputy Governor of the Central River Region admit that the major issue confronting their functions is land disputes. Mamudu Lamin Choi visited the Governor's residence of the Central River Region and had an exclusive interview with the Deputy Governor. Long festering land problems among people in the rural community are now bubbling to the surface and landing at the desk of the heads of the Central River Region so that their work is dominated by land ownership disputes. While district chiefs are vested with judicial powers to settle such cases, governors are not left out of this function as they also play an oversight role. At the district tribunal, chiefs preside over land matters and their decisions are legally binding. In the execution of our duties are mainly centered around disputes of land ownership. Those are problems actually which we do encounter, not on a daily basis, but very regularly, very, very regularly. It seems as if disputes that we are self over the years because of the new dispensation are now being brought forward for redress. The Central River region covers 27.1% of the land size of this country. Farming is a major activity for people in this region and they depend on it for their survival. The Gambia is witnessing rapid trend and rate of transactions between estate developers and the people. And there is a worry about what amount of land will be available for farmers if such transactions are not controlled. However, this deputy governor feels the buying of land for estate developments is not yet the case in his region and that farmers' land will be jealously protected from estate development. I safely say we are not yet disturbed by such type of development and that we are going to jealously guard the remaining land that we have and do belong to our farmers. We cannot give out our lands for estate development at the disadvantage of the farmers, especially of their lives and livelihood. The cutting down of trees for estate development is the only option left for estate dealers. Hence farming is mostly done on cleared land. Felling down of trees for this purpose can have adverse effects on climate change and the people could be left at the mercy of drought and hunger. And if you cut down all our forests with this uh, impact of climate change, it will have very adverse effects. And will they be able, will the indigenous or the natives of the region be able to access those estates? Who are they building it for? We were thinking, even if it's to be a low housing scheme that can be beneficial to farmers, will be more appropriate than the housing estates that cannot be accessible by the farmers. President Barrow in September last year swore in land commissioners whose mandates are to investigate disputes, assess properties and matters of national boundaries by working closely with the land ministry. President Barrow accused former President James' regime of what he described as the abuse of rights of citizens, which led to loss of lands for political and dubious reasons. Mahmoud Lamin Choi for QTV News. We'll take a short commercial break and when we return, the news continues. It is the new era in broadcasting. We showed it to you with our continuously improving content with thousands of viewers around the world. Now, how do you take advantage of our existing and constantly increasing viewership? Advertise with QTV and reach a large audience. Call us on 32444444 or email marketing at qtv.gm. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. QTV Gambia. QTV, a new era in broadcasting. Light. From the beginning of time, light has been there. It is integral to our survival and to our way of living. We need light to work. To build. To grow things and even to see our loved ones. Light makes things easier and better. So QCell has changed the way you buy QPower to make it easier and more accessible. You can now access the same service quickly 
and get your Cash Power tokens instantly with the new QCell QPower code. To light up your world, simply dial star 363 hash. With a touch of your fingers, with ease and convenience from the comfort of your home or office, you can bring light into your world instantly with star 363 hash. Q Power, lighting your world. Q Cell Sunyabus. We, we innovate, innovate, others, others follow. follow. The Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education conducted a press conference on the new teacher posting deployment procedure to be rolled out for the new academic year. The conference briefed those in attendance on data of the supply demand of teachers in across various regions for the 2019-2020. Ajib Intudrame has more details. The press conference shows both the needed demand and supply of teachers in areas that are affected and ways to ease them. Ibrahim Asadi, director of HR at MOPSI, presented the data of the demand and supply of teachers in various schools, which showed that there are not enough teachers for some subjects such as math, Islamic religious knowledge, home economics and physical education, among others. On the other hand, some areas have excess teachers for some core subjects such as English and science. When you look at the national demand, that is what is required by the country. It's 1,661. We have in total 894, 172 in-service teachers, 722 pre-service teachers, but when you combine that 894 together, we have, it, it doesn't match with the national demand, that is 1,661. So is there where we have a problem? So meaning that the demand is higher than the supply. In the upper component, we have realized that in certain subject areas we have a surplus than what we need. But we still have some gray areas we, where we need teachers. Mathematics, home science, IRK, CR, C, CRE, I mean physical education, and the like. We still have some gaps. And uh, therefore, we are thinking of now using those gaps to inform Gambia College on the areas we need them to train teachers for us. Ibrahim Asi Sawa, Mopsi's permanent secretary, emphasized that the postings are not for the in-service teachers, but for new entrants to the profession, and stressed that all the data relates strictly to public schools. He also said that more teachers will be trained to meet the demand of the areas where teacher resources are lacking. Mr. Sisao also explained some of the other challenges the ministry faces. The purpose of this discussion is not for our teachers who are already in the system. All the teachers who are already in the system are already posted and they are already placed. The purpose of uh, this information is for the incoming teachers, the incoming graduates from Gambia College. Uh, you would realize that uh, Gambia College has two kinds of teachers. The one set is for the teachers that we sent to be retrained in a different category. And those who are coming to the Gambia College for the first time with the intention of graduating and becoming teachers. He also urges all Gambians to work together to seek solutions and make the educational system great in order for all Gambian children to have quality education. Ajibintu Drame, QTV News. The Deputy Mayor of KMC reveals that 19 trucks ordered by Kanifing Municipal Council for waste collection across its 19 wards have started operations. Ajifatum Boob reports. Waste collection has always been one of the country's major hassles. An effort to solve this problem has been initiated by the mayor of KMC, Ahmed Talib Ben Souda. In an exclusive interview, the mayor's deputy updated us on what has happened since the launching of the trucks. The deputy mayor, Musa Ba, told us about the significance of the innovative project called the Mbalit Project and showed us the waste collection coverage routes on the map. 
He says the project, which has started oppression, is getting a positive feedback and has employed 150 civilians. Um, like I said, um, we, we are having a positive feedback from the people, the community. They are buying the tickets. Um, this has a great um, positive impact that is um, benefits, economic benefits. Um, it's, um, this project is able to um, hire about 150 staff, um, including drivers, um, secretaries, uh, janitors. Um, so you can see um, it's, 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 it's a, so, a source of employment also. Furthermore, there has been a debate and comment as to whether the waste collection fee charge should be paid or not, as many people do not seem to understand the reasons behind the payment. To help us understand, Musa Abba further explains the necessity of the $10 charge. He says, People should remember there are operational fees involved for the maintenance of these vehicles and that staffs need to be paid. Uh, for that payment um, is, is obvious because um, uh, remember there are uh, operation costs involved that is paying these um, workers, uh, maintenance fee for the vehicles um, and also uh, fuel. Um, so obviously, it, it, uh, for it to be realistic, um, there should be um, a minimal fee. That's why um, there is a minimal fee to it. It is $10. The process on getting the waste collected was explained to us by Bakari Singate, project manager of the Mbalit project. We take your tickets and we collect your rubbish. So what we ask people to hear, once you hear the truck, get your tickets ready. Yes, we will not collect rubbish when the tickets are not there, but we will collect any rubbish as long as the tickets are intact and they are within our, the zones that they are being collected. Some of the residents around the Carnifin South area spoke to us on their understanding of the Mbalik project. Imam Al-Haji Malam in Jaita gave us his view. We give thanks because we are now blessed with a vehicle to clear the waste. We are very happy. There was previously a vehicle that came to collect our waste, and every month we paid $300. We are going to compare the two services and see which one is reasonable. They are very reliable and have been collecting our waste for many years. So, if the government desires to help us with a vehicle, that's a very good gesture. We are praying for Taliban Suda's long life. While some areas are privileged to get waste collection services, Places such as the Canfin Estate and layout areas say the trucks haven't started operating in their area. Amadutano Jalo, a shopkeeper and resident of Canfin Estate, remarks. Honest to God, we haven't seen them around in this area. But supposing they did, I have not heard of it. Let them help us with our ways. We all know it's unhealthy living with ways in your shop or home. We will really appreciate it if our wish is granted. There are some women employees who feel that they should contribute to the development of the society. They believe in whatever way a person can help in the advancement of their country, they should, no matter the gender. Binta Singate urges women to come out and work. Whatever men can do, we can do it as well. The reason why we are collecting waste as women is because we want other women to tie their belts tight. Come out and join us work. Ajifatu Bimbu, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's have a quick look at our main stories. Malik Jatta and Omar Jalla, former members of ex-president Jamia's hit squad on Tuesday, admitted participating in several killings, including the killings of Haruna and Mercy Jame, and the execution of 44 Ghanaian nationals in July 2005. They made these confessions while testifying at the ongoing TRC public hearings. Senior officials of government and development partners are meeting to discuss ways of consolidating the country's peace and security. The meeting is jointly organized by ECOWAS Secretariat and the Strategic Policy Delivery Department under the office of the president. Land disputes are now a common burning problem in the Gambia. It should therefore come as no surprise to hear the deputy governor of the Central River region admit that the major problem confronting their functions is land disputes. The deputy mayor of KMC reveals that 19 trucks ordered by the Carnival Municipal Council for waste collection across its 19 wards started operations. Finally, here is a public announcement. 
The Gambia Armed Forces, in partnership with the Embassy of the United States of America in the Gambia, will conduct live firing exercise on Wednesday, 24th July 2019, at the Lance Corporal Bojang's range in Brikama, starting at 6 a.m. The Gambia Armed Forces, in a statement, urges the public, especially residents living around Brikama, Kasakunda, Jalambang, and other satellite villages, not to panic, but cautioned to avoid the designated areas during the period. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news.